Hi, and welcome back to another The Games I Have Been Playing uh, video, I guess. I actually have been playing quite a few games, and uh, the weather outside is really bad, and i basically just wearing, I was lazy, I'm wearing my normal shirt that I basically wear at home. Um, even though this was my favorite shirt, this was the Street Fighter shirt, where it says how to open, but I, I guess... It has been washed so many times that it uh, faded away. But, um, so yes, yeah, let's just start with sort of the game that I am sort of like playing here and there. So of course, the, the, first up though, the game that I have been playing the most is Tales of Symphonia. I have beaten that game and I absolutely loved it. And once I have beaten Tales of Symphonia, I haven't really gotten sort of a new main game. So I have been playing you know, a lot of different games. Um, the game that I've been playing here and there, as I wanted to mention, is Dead or Alive 2. This is the ultimate version on the Xbox. I am trying to get all the costumes for every character. I think I've had them all on easy mode, so now I'm playing through normal mode. But I'm not really good, super good, at sort of um, not blocking, but sort of counter-attacking. So... Um, it's taking me a while to sort of play through your storyline missions uh, levels to uh, unlock all the costumes. But it's a lot of fun. Their Life 2 is my favorite fighting game of all time. And uh, it's still a lot of fun all these years later. And on Xbox, the ultimate version is a little bit better than the PS2. On the PS3, I, I'm still selling a few of my games. I'm almost done. But every time I sort of see them, I'm looking at my, all the games that I want to sell, I'm like, do I really want to sell this? Do I really want to sell this? Because especially in the first week, I have sold a few games that I did regret because I sold them just way too fast and I kind of bought them back. And now I'm completely done. Everything that's sort of on sale right now, that, that's it. But there were two games I was looking at and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just try these games out. I'm just going to play these games and see if I like them or not. And one of those is actually Dynasty Warrior Strike Force. Oh, no, this is not your typical Dynasty Warrior. This is more of an, um, I won't say Monster Hunter, but it's sort of kind of like Monster Hunter. Sort of kind of like to Toei Kiden, where... There are small levels, you, you, you sort of beat a few amount of characters and then you beat the boss and you upgrade your gear, etc, etc. It's really actually pretty difficult to describe because it's not literally Monster Hunter. You do fight sort of a, a waves of enemies. This was, I, th I think, a PSP game. So it is kind of like a Dynasty Warrior meets Monster Hunter sort of game and I played for like an hour or two and I didn't really like it. So I just wanted to keep this. Same goes with Dynasty Warriors Gundam. I love all the Dynasty Warrior Gundam games. Um, Reborn, I'm also going to keep. I'm not going to sell that game. But I was kind of thinking, you know, is it really necessary to keep Dynasty Warriors Gundam? And then I was like, you know what? Let's try the game out. And in terms of features and the amount of characters and Gundams you can choose and sort of the way it plays, it's really old school Dynasty Warriors. Um, they definitely sort of made the games way better and improved upon the concept of Dynasty Warriors Gundam. And I was actually blown away that the game looks pretty good. It, it runs perfectly fine. It, it looks really good. So I completed one scenario with one character. I think it was Hero, or was it the other one? I'm not entirely sure. You basically play as the original granddaddy Gundam, like the, the normal Gundam. So I'm trying to play all the scenarios. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this one, even though you could possibly say, but Claude, Dinosaur is Gundam 2, 3, Reborn. Is way better, yes, but this is a game worth having in my collection, at least for me personally. Now, there was a PS2 game that I'm like, you know what? I've actually never played this. This, this is a game that I would probably like. This is a game up my alley. 
And that is Rumble Roses. And you know why it's up my alley. Girls fighting, wrestling, whatever. So I never really played a wrestling game like the uh, WWE or WWF games back in the day. I never played any of those. So I sort of got in here blind. And yes, it's, it's kind of like like a mix between Dead or Alive and probably one of those WWE games, but it's really simple. It's really simple. Um, you have a, 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 a small amount of moves. You have two, two or three buttons that you actually have to use to, to do moves and to attack. And you know what? I actually like this a lot more and I'm still playing this. I'm trying to sort of beat all the storyline missions so you unlock all the all the sort of how do you alter ego characters of all the characters in the game, and then I'm going to try and uh, and beat the storyline missions with these characters, so you can unlock all the costumes, and it's it's a lot of fun, I have to say, and it looks good for a PS2 game. This actually looks damn good, and um, so yeah, but they're like they're like a few stages. There's like a mud pool stage, and there, there are quite a lot of characters, and you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm having way, way more fun than I thought I would have. But that's a game I'm also going to keep. Now, this may be one of sort of the, the bigger ones in the room is Sea of Stars. Today, two weeks ago, Sea of Stars physical finally came out. I've played it for uh, seven or eight hours, I grind it a little bit, and Graphically, the game is gorgeous. It is breaking. It looks so good. Man, I think back in the day when you were playing on the Super Nintendo, this is probably what you expected the future of gaming to look like. Like, this is the future of RPGs. This is how it's going to look like. Super sharp graphics. It looks amazing. Of course, we all know it kind of didn't of course with 3d graphics but but still this is a gorgeous game i i cannot say this enough the gameplay is pretty good it's pretty good it's very simple i like that i don't like these over complicated mechanics in video games especially not japanese rpgs i just like it simple just simple um just a standard turn-based rpg kind of like chrono trigger it does really reminds me of Chrono Trigger, and that is what they wanted to do. Um, I like the characters uh, as the characters uh, as how they are, but I don't really like the character designs, if you know what I mean. Like the characters itself are interesting, but and the world is very interesting, but I don't necessarily like the character designs and. Talking about the world and the lore, I love it, especially in an RPG. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's a G, JRPG or just a standard RPG. I like it when you basically am thrown into a world, and I think Tales of Symphonia also did this, where they talk about different groups, different countries, the, the, the big bad evil guy or the big bad evil monster, and as a player, especially in the beginning, you are like... What the hell are you talking about? What are they talking about? What do you mean? What is this? What is this? What is that? I love that. It gives mystery, mystery and it wants me to keep on playing and finding out what are they talking about? What does this mean? Um, so they have done an incredible good job of doing that. And now you're probably saying, well, Cloud, it's been two weeks and you say you only played for eight hours. What's the deal? Well, I kind of stopped playing and I don't know why. I was just not really in the mood, I guess. Um, this is my last week at work. Then I have three weeks of vacation and I will probably play and beat this one. Um, but it's, it's, I'm having a lot of fun. At, for the time I played, I had a lot of fun. Now, this is by far the big guy in the room. This is my new Super Nintendo Mini, now I have two. And as I mentioned in my previous video, 
there was a guy on the marketplace. He was selling a Super Nintendo Mini with like 300 games. I asked him, hey, could you put in RPGs? Could you put in beat-em-ups? He was like, yeah, sure. I also have a lot of English translated or Japanese English translated or Japanese only games that were English translated, holy shit, <laughs> that I have and I can put them on it. And he did. And uh, I am having a blast playing through two games. And Tales of Fantasia is a game that I'm going to keep like for my vacation. But I am mostly playing Shining Soul. Now, Shining Soul 1 and 2 are like Game Boy Advance Diablo style RPGs. Literally, it's Diablo. Just really smaller, more simple. You don't really have this big amount of gear that you can collect, but it's literally plays like Diablo. Uh, and then, of course, mixed with a Japanese flair, Japanese style. Um, I'm playing the first one, but I have read that the second one is way better, especially in the graphics and music department, because to be really honest, I was expecting some good music. I was expecting some good music in Shining Souls, and it's okay. Like it's like I won't, I won't never listen to it or anything like that. There is one track I think in the the Desert Temple that is pretty good, um, but overall the music isn't that great. But I'm having a huge amount of fun playing that game. I'm now eight or nine hours into the game, and I'm probably pretty far because I have read the game is about 10 hours and then it's over. And I actually cannot wait to play the second one and to see how much they have improved. It's really weird that such a simple game that even back then in on the Game Boy Advance original hardware wasn't really reviewed that well. I love it. I'm playing, I want to play that game more than. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or, or anything like that, um, to be really honest. Now, I played that game this weekend so much, so long that I did play another one because I played SimCity. And I was playing SimCity, and in your mind, I think a lot of these older games were way more complex, way more in-depth than they actually are. SimCity on the Super Nintendo is a great game. The music is fantastic. And I had a lot of fun playing it, but it is very simple. You place your roads or your railway, you place your, your residential houses, you play your com commercial houses or buildings, and you place your in in industrial buildings, and you place a harbor or whatever what, and you, you get like a casino or an amusement park, and that's kind of it. That's kind of it, right? And then I realized, wait up, I have City Skylines, and I love City Skylines. It's, oh my God, the game is so good. So last weekend, on, I think on a Friday, I you know downloaded City Skylines again because I had it on PlayStation Plus, and I played it, and I played it almost the whole night. I think it was like 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock, something like that. And I already built like a pretty huge city and I kind of already know I made a lot of mistakes. But man, especially all the high rising buildings. I love giant cities like, like Tokyo, Dubai, uh, Shanghai, New York with high rise. And you can make such an amazing looking city in city skylines. And the features are so massive. There are so many options to play that game. I love it. Um, but after sort of playing these games, I was a couple of days ago, I'm like, you know what? I want to do something else. I'm going to try one of those RPGs that the guy put on the, the, the Super Nintendo Mini. So I started playing Dual Orbs 2. Now, I don't know if that game is ever being released here in the West or or it's, it's, it's a translated game from a Japanese only exclusive, but... It is kind of like the Final Fantasy, kind of like super, every Super Nintendo game had that overview with the little characters. But when you actually go into battle, you see, like, for that time, a lifelike character. Just your normal, typical human character. And it looks pretty good. You see the, the sort of the main guy with his sword, you know, basically 
humping around and you see his armor moving and in every character you probably see something moving and i think especially back then it would have probably looked really good especially if you consider that little final fantasy characters that was sort of the norm back then so i'm, I'm having a lot of fun playing the game like four or five hours into the game and that was grinding a shit ton. i was grinding so much because you start off with wooden weapons and you literally do one damage at an enemy. But you get another character with you that does a huge amount of damage. So you're basically sort of forced, kind of, to grind to get your first real sword and your real spear. So I was grinding, 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 grinding a lot, got all the stuff, went to the first dungeon, and the boss kicked my ass so much, so much, that I was thinking, I think I have to um, lose this match. I think that this boss, you should not be able to defeat it because I had like eight or 900 health and he basically hits me like 300, 400 health. You don't really have many, much money to buy herbs. You, you can, um, there's one character that can heal and then there's like 300 healing points. So I was thinking, you probably have to die. So I tried my best to defeat him and I died, and it was game over, and guess what? I forgot to save. I forgot to fucking save. So I have to do everything over again, but I really liked what I was playing. This is one of these simple RPGs where you just go out, do a dungeon, grind, basically grind your ass out so you can defeat the, the, the boss, and then you go further in. So... Um, that is definitely a game that I will also play, but I'm first going to beat Shining Souls because there is a little problem that I have, though. I play way too much. Oh, now that I think about it, I have also been playing uh, Crimson Tears on the PS2. I am literally at the end boss, but that guy also kicked my ass, so I'm sort of leveling up my weapons, leveling up the character. It is a dungeon crawler. Yes, dungeon, um, like, how do you say it? How do you say it? How do you say it? All these indie games have this randomized dungeon crawlers, you know. Um, it's nothing new. PS2 also already had it. PS1 had it. Everything has already been done before. You know, it is indie dungeon crawlers. Kind of like, uh, what's the game called? What's the game called? With, the, uh, with all the guns. You sort of go to levels and then you pick up a huge amount of guns, something like that. A, a dungeon gun? No, no, not dungeon guns. No, I cannot. I've played that game also a little while. Um, guns and dungeons? No, no. It's a really popular indie um, rogue-like dungeon crawler. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Leave in the comments below if you know what I'm trying to memorize which game. Uh, it's a game with guns and a little, little guy, and then uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool game. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as I wanted to say, but as I wanted to say, I am playing way too many games, way too many RPGs that I wanna play. So I play like an hour here, an hour there, because last month I also tried out R2, uh, R2 2. I tried out uh, Atelier Iris 2, because it's a game that I want to replay. I'm playing way too much at the same time. That's why I'm trying to now focus and play one game and that after another. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, care, like, share, comment, subscribe, and like always, you're going to see me next time. Boop. 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 No poop. No, it doesn't work. No.